don't be afraid to, to try to bring the future forward. In order to do that, the, you know, some things may break. You may make some mistakes. And if you try to do everything perfect, you'll, you'll never make forward progress. And so we just try to encourage everyone in the company to not care too much about how we did it in the past, but figure out what's the right thing to do now. Define these terms for me, because we talk about them a lot in this program, but just from your mouth. Uh, you said with that 10-year program, 10-year plan, there's artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and connectivity. Yeah. Uh, artificial intelligence. AI, artificial intelligence, is simply trying to make machines smart, make computers be able to see the world like we do, be able to learn from reading and listening like we do as humans, and then take that information and, and make judgments and make reasonable decisions about them. So, they can help us with, with lots of tasks around the world. Virtual reality. Virtual reality, VR, is, is a technology that makes it feel as if you are somewhere else. You put a pair of uh, headset on, a pair of goggles, and, and it looks like you've been transported to you know, maybe an alien world or maybe to visit your family uh, uh, thousands of miles away. And connectivity. Connectivity is the easy one. It's, it's you know, 4.1 billion people around the world don't have access to the internet. Most people don't have access to the internet. And we want to bring it to them. It's just crazy. It's such a simple part of our life. Can you imagine living without the internet? It's hard, hard to believe. And part of the push is to figure out how to give that to those people. Yeah, so this is a place where technology can help. Because we say, look, what are things we can do to radically reduce the cost of the liver internet? Instead of driving across the forest for hundreds of miles, we fly a carbon fiber plane that's powered by the sun to provide internet access. And instead of tearing up the streets in a city, we uh, use wireless access points that can be attached to power poles. And if these sort of technologies work, they could take the cost of delivering internet down by 5 or 10x, and that's what we think it takes to connect to the rest of the world. You said you work, work on technology, anyone power to share anything they want with anyone else. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. We want to be able to get people to, to be with So what will the world look like in 2026? 2026. Well, I could say 2017. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what we hope is that a, a lot more people are connected to the internet, um, and we hope that technologies like VR, you know, do you have any family members live far away? <coughs> there you go. And, you know, wouldn't it be great if I told you I had this technology and you just put it on and it feels like a phone I mean, everybody loves that, right? We all have loved ones somewhere else, and, and VR hopefully in 10 years will take us there, and then, you know, AI really has the power to, to kind of transform our world in, in so many ways. And it, it starts with really basic things like helping me communicate in different languages. You know, we, we translate 2 billion posts a day on Facebook in 45 different languages. Um, you know, in 10 years, I hope I'll be able to go to a foreign country and, you know, put a pair of glasses on and instantly read every street sign as if I spoke the language and read the language and strike up a conversation with someone on the street as if I was any of That's that's the sort of things that are in our reach with, uh, with AI. And, and this really within your head of it because you've got to find the technology to do that. Yeah. Or enhance the technology you have to do that. Yeah, we can't do this yet, but it's, it looks like we can get it. And, and what is it you need to get? You know, these are built on, on such a foundation. So, you know, AI is really underpinning all of these things. And, and AI is being advanced because our computers are getting faster. We're able to train on larger data sets. And, the really exciting thing is the science, the actual, the algorithms, the way these things work are advancing to, to quite a vast extent now. And so we need, you know, smart computer scientists to build kind of better algorithms plus more data and, and compute on the AI side. And then when you think about virtual reality or augmented reality, you know, this vision of having these glasses that have these superpowers, there's a lot of hard hardware problems to solve there and, and getting light into my eyes and making it light comfortable enough to, to wear all day long. Often people talk about the big five, which is Facebook. Google, uh, Apple, uh, uh, Amazon, Microsoft. Is that your competition or is your competition Snapchat? Our competition is, is kind of everything because our products are free. You know, you can download a new app at any time, at any point, and, and switch. And so, you know, this is one of the things we talk a lot about in the company, getting on morning to everyone on their second day, second week of work. And our whole discussion is about culture and, and this move fast and break things you asked about earlier. It's all about realizing that we have to always change and adapt because the world does. And if we don't, people will use something else. I remember conversations with, with Mark Zuckerberg and also um, other people I show as well. It, it is the, the, the power that, or the revenue that Facebook got when you found out that there was going to be advertising on the mobile. Correct? Yeah. There's a big question about that. Well, prior to that, no one had really had a big advertising business on mobile. And, you know, people would say things like, well, you don't buy things on your phone, it's too hard to type in a credit card. Um, you know,
know, and so that was one of these examples where we jumped in with both feet and said, well, people are using mobile phones. We got to build a business there, but it always starts with building a great experience. So we, you know, ported all of our apps and put a whole company towards mobile. And then we figured out how to make that business work on mobile. Now, so, you know, vast majority of our, our revenue is, is mobile apps. Where's the yeah. Well, it's a huge part of, of VR. You know, and, you know, every time you look at a screen or anything, it's, it's 2D. But in the real world, 3 this glass is here, this, this table is here. And one of the magics of VR is you, you put it on and you're in a, you're in a 3D environment. And, you know, watching people sculpt in, in VR is, is amazing. We've seen, um, you know, medical professionals train and understand human anatomy using VR. You know, the human heart is a, it's a complex uh, item and it's, it's very three-dimensional. So having healthcare professionals be able to understand exactly how it works is something easier done in 3D than on a, on a piece of paper or, or a model on the table. So it really does have the power to transform people. A lot of things that you thought previously had to be carried out in the cloud can now be carried out on your iPhone. Yeah. And, and what's amazing, you know, like even in the last year is these AI algorithms that are advancing so quickly and run on big servers that use a lot of power and, and are very powerful. We've been figuring out how to get them to crunch and run down on your phone. So instead of sending information up to the cloud, having to process it and send the results back down, you can just do it on your phone. So, you know, people are working on diagnosing, uh, you know, cancer, skin cancer with, a, you know, with AI. And you can imagine a future not too long from now where you can do that even without internet access. Just with a cell phone app, takes a picture and gives a doctor anywhere in the world the power to be one of the best in diagnosing, you know, different diseases. And that that combination of AI and advances and then putting it on your smartphone is something I think a lot of us have been surprised about. It's your business, you live in a world in which in Silicon Valley where everybody's in everybody's business. Um, but you haven't developed a phone. No. Is that a not yet question? <laughs> We're, uh, you know, our products are, are used by almost 2 billion people. So, you know, they're used by all sorts of different phones all over the world. We want to bring them to where people are. And, uh, you know, so we're happy to bring the service there. And then, you know, a lot of what I spend my time on is what's next after the phone? So tell me. Well, it's not going to be a little rectangle in your pocket, yeah. right? It's probably not the last computer. Just think about it. Yeah. yeah, that's an amazing well, idea. I mean, you're starting to see the beginnings of it today. And I'll tell you the aspects that I'm most excited about. You know, when you think about if you've used a, um, you know, a Amazon Alexa or something in your home and you've spoken to it, asked it to play music. Personal assistance or yes. Yeah. Well, what's amazing about this that I think most people miss is it's starting to get technology to be in the background rather than in the foreground. So if I want to play music in my home today, I pull out my phone, I stare at it. I'm, I'm completely removed from this conversation. I've dropped out of the real world to do something on my computer. When I can just talk to an agent, I can still look at you and say, hey, can you play with hot chili peppers? Right. Done. So that of moving but technology, that's, that's here today. Yeah. And it's the rudimentary stage, it's the beginning stage. Right, and it can play music and it can turn on your lights and you can reorder things you bought, right? Right. So, so just wind this forward and say, you have this agent that can accomplish a lot of tasks for you. And maybe I have a pair of glasses here that allows it to display information. So I have some notes on the things I want to make sure I say. And, and uh, you know appointments that are having next, and a you know cheering message from my wife, you know showing up here on my screen. Again, all without having to pull my phone out and remove myself from this conversation. So that that's a thing the thing we're most excited about. Is and who has competitive advantages in something like that? I think it's a new field. Mm -hmm. So I don't think yeah, Amazon's there in a big way. Yeah, and, and I think you got Google coming in. You know, there's so much technology to develop there, though. So much of what I'm talking about doesn't exist, and that's why it's exciting. It's because you got to build and and. That's why we're investing. What's augmented reality? It's the ability to take reality, us here today, and augment it. I can, you know, I can, uh, you know, decorate this glass. I can have an overlay of information, you know, sitting next to you. I can, I can do anything I want. You know, I can make my house look like a Harry Potter castle. That's what my kids are into. You know, that's I think what we're excited about too. Is just taking the digital and, and you know, the power of being able to create music, putting you in another world. Yeah, but doing it wherever you want. What, what happened to Google Glass? Tomorrow, you know, I think it was early. It's just, just too early in the market, the technology really wasn't ready. Just how you know in the right time. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's uh, it's hard to tell sometimes. And you only really know once you get a product in market and you see how people react to it. I and mean, that's that's the real challenge. And, you know, like I was talking to Jan Lacuna, who runs our AI lab, and he was too early. He had ideas in AI in the late 80s and early 90s. And these ideas, 
are the things that underpin this great revolution we're having in AI 25 years later. It's too early because the other components were not ready. Right. Yeah. You sometimes need a whole system together. In that case, he didn't have the computational power or the data you needed to really take advantage of his ideas. But those same ideas 20 years later are, are like magic. Is social media right for transformation from all this because of AI, because of machine learning, because of a whole range of things? If you think about the basis of what we're trying to do with social media is connect, connect with the people you care about, the information you want to see. And you know, the challenge probably you have, is the challenge I have, is there's just too much information online. Just, just way too much to consume. And the thing you'd hate to do is to do it on enough hour. Yeah. And so, you know, if I said I had this magic technology and it made sure that it knew exactly what you wanted to see. It's like a friend who stayed up all night, oh, yeah. drinking Red Bull, knows you have been late, right. and is preparing, you know, Charlie, this is what you need to see in this order. Make sure you don't miss this update from your family, this update from your friend, and this news article. And you, at every instant, have access to this. That's the sort of thing AI can do that I don't know any other thing can do. Is make sure every moment we spend. But is it taking command of our lives? And no, because it's a tool. We control it. I think it actually gives control of us. Because I can, I can tell what I want. I want to take a break. I want to go hike, and I want to be online. Great. When I get back, I want to see exactly what I want to see in order. I want to make sure I never lose touch with key friends. My, my you know, friends having a hard day, my brother's having a hard week. I want to know about it. I want to call, them, right? And and making sure I have to call for you. Yeah. Make sure I have that data at the moment and don't ever miss it. And how far away is that? That's years away. It's really good, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's the limitation? You know, now we're starting to talk about things that start to understand people a lot better than any of our AI systems do today. You know, they're, they're pretty good at understanding basic things that, you know, I can tell you this is a glass and this is a table, but understanding what's important to me requires a, you know, a much more nuanced understanding. How much time you and Mark spend thinking about how people are misusing technology, whether it's fake news or something else? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we care a lot about how people use the platform, and Mark has talked about this extensively with this community letter and, and you know, we want to make sure that people get access to what they want, but they have, you know, accurate information and the tools they need to understand kind of what they're reading. Um, and, you know, this is a, a big part of what, what we do and, and what we work on every single day. So how are we going to correct the problems we've seen? Well, you know, I think it starts in, in, in a couple of different ways. You know, first of all, you know, false news is, is something that's the whole industry is, is, is challenging with. And I think there's different forms of it. You know, there's people out there trying to make money off of this, right? And so that's the first easy thing to do is, is disrupt that. It's, it's not right for people to make money trying to do this. We can disrupt the way they're trying to monetize it with ads and other things like that. And I think we can give better tools to people to understand, you know, what third parties may say about this article or understand a, a wider variety of views on this topic than the one they're seeing to make sure people are, are better informed. This is a long problem, something we in the whole industry are going to be working on for a while. Let's do some things that we might call moon shooting, uh, which is thinking about big ideas. Sure. Uh, what are the big ideas for Facebook? Other than when we talk about connectivity, yeah. and when we talk about uh, the, the, the reality. Uh, tell me where you're really thinking about blue sky and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think it's... Uh, I mean, delivering the language through skin, from the brain then directly to text. All yeah. I mean, I think all of this fits under the category of kind of unlocking human potential. You know, you and I are, are talking today, right. You know, the speed at which we're talking is hundreds of thousands of times slower than your brain is operating right now. This is a slow, you know, it's like, you ever use a dial modem back in the day? Oh, yeah. You know, we're talking about the speed of a dial modem. You know, our brain is going like a gigabit Ethernet, you know, a gigabit internet connection. So it's, it's kind of going through this little straw. So the more we learn about the brain, the more we be able to um, enhance the velocity of change by machine. I think so. I think, you know, being able to build machines that are smarter and can, can better do what we want and then building ways for us to, you know, communicate without having to type or, you know, in some cases even talk, you know, directly, directly through thoughts at some point in the future. And that will unlock a whole new set of applications. We've talked about virtual reality a lot. I mean, the whole idea of filming using virtual reality to tell the stories. It's really a remarkable concept in the sense that you are there on stage yeah. with the actors. Yeah. Well, I mean, the goal of film has always been immersion, right? Yeah. Get lost in the show. And, you know, virtual reality is so powerful. You, you know, I think you might have done the demo where you look like you're standing on the edge of the ledge of the building. I've given yeah. that demo hundreds of times, and it's my favorite thing to try to get people to walk off the ledge. Yeah. And, and barely anyone can do it. Their knees start shaking, 
They get wobbly. Do they have fear for that? Really, they, they forget for the moment that, in fact, this is our virtual reality. That's right. They get lost in, in, in the story, in, in the scene. And so imagine what you figured out with what's amazing is that really some of our best news organizations are beginning to use it yeah. extensively. Yeah. I mean, you talk about empathy, right? This is, I think, the ultimate empathy device. How, what's it actually like to live in this part of the world? To be in a refugee camp, to be in a war zone, right? To be going through the elections. And VR is one of those technologies that can transport you there and get you as close as we can to actually being there. And from a technical standpoint, we're just beginning to uh, to figure out how we can do this. Oh yeah, we're in the floppy disk and you know the call size computer phase of VR as far as I'm concerned. We're we're just it's starting to work, but we're just in the beginning. There's a lot more to go. Um, what have you been caught off guard by? What has surprised you? I mean, were you surprised in any way by how, how people were, were live streaming violence and pornography and the cameras in their bedroom and all that stuff? I mean, you know, obviously those events, it's, it's terrible. It's something that, that, that um, it, obviously the events themselves are terrible and the fact that they're being broadcast is, 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 is also terrible. And so I think that's something where, you know, Mark talked recently about hiring another 3,000 people to help us respond to that. You know, so, um, you know, I've also been surprised at the, the positive ways in which people have used live. You know, when Mark posted about I don't know, us working on this problem, a bunch of people commented and said, well, you know what, I was able to see, you know, my brother was able to see, you know, uh, someone's graduation even though he's overseas employed in the military. Or I was able to take a class that I was going to miss because I didn't have childcare because of, you know, a friend streamed it online. You know, so I think you've got to, you know, look at the other uses of this stuff too and, and hope that they're, you know, there's a lot more of these happening every single day than, than some of these terrible things. And how far are we from the day that some movie maker will want to uh, premiere his movie? Not in movie theater. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, we have to do the movie Yeah, I think you see a lot of great stuff. That's right. You know, this is, you know, I'm, I'm working on the future, but it's sometimes hard to tell where this is all going to go. And that's, the, that's kind of the fun part. So you build these technology platforms and, and it unlocks the creativity of others who we thought of things I would have never thought of. And that's that's what we're trying to do is get this technology out and get the creativity of people all around the world to use it. That really does make a difference. In, in other words, when you're tapping into the possibility of innovation, you know, and creativity of a, of, of a worldwide population, uh, the capacity of one person to say something that causes another person to do something. Yeah. Uh, and then someone else who not thought about either A or B sees the possibility of putting them together and making C. Absolutely. I mean, that's the excitement of what we're doing. That's what makes it so fun. That's what gets me to work every day. And that's why, you know, when we work on things like AI, you know, one of the things we do is we, we open source our code and we, we publish our results because it's such a foundational technology. It's going to be useful for us for lots of things, but that same technology is useful in, in lots of other applications, and it's great to see people build on it. Yeah. You're also, and I think Mark has a big interest in this, it's the ways that you can introduce Wi-Fi around the world. Yeah. Whether it's balloons or... Working on all sorts of different things. So, you know, we've got a, a crazy idea for a solar-powered carbon fiber aircraft that can fly for three months at a time to kind of fly over an area and basically be a, you know, giant internet hotspot over a 50-mile region. We've got a, a, a tethered drone that you can deploy in a disaster area. So, you know, when... It, when Disaster strikes, you know, the infrastructure goes down, and you know, connectivity is often the first thing. And we've got a drone you can, you can fly up and kind of an instant cell phone tower, you know, to Wi Fi access points that entrepreneurs all across the world can set up a local hotspot, they can make money, and they can provide internet access for, for you know, everyone in their town. Um, so you, but you're at two billion now? Yes. Almost. Almost two. What are you at? One, one nine four. When will you reach two billion? Uh, I can't tell you. <laughs> and what do you think the potential in the next 10 years is? In terms of where we're going to grow? In terms of the number of, of users? Well, you know, um, you know, I think the challenge is at some point there's there's not enough people connected on the internet. You know, there's there's lots of people, billions of people yet to be connected. And so that's kind of one of our goals as we talked about is, is to get, get those people connected on the internet. And so it's hard to know where the cap is. I mean, I think the reason why the products are so popular is, is they fit a very, you know, basic thing people want. Everyone wants to like, stay in touch with friends and family, yeah. right? It's just a matter of, of how they do it. Obviously, Amazon, obviously Apple, beginning to get a lot of in the industry in terms of uh, being able to make or buy content. Does that make you Facebook? Well, you know, I think all of that 
sense from, you know, people, people are watching a lot of video and they watch a lot of video on phones. You know, we're, we're seeing this huge transformation from, from the TV to the device that you have to do all the time. And so, um, you know, we've had a lot of success with, with live video and people producing their own videos and other things like that. We'll, we'll see where that goes, but I think it's a, you know, it's an area where we're interested in making sure people have interesting things to see and interact with on Facebook. Great to have you here. Thank you, John. Thank you. I can almost say this.